everyone! In this video, we're going to take a look at electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, specifically the halogenation of a benzene, using either a chlorination or a bromination reaction. So if we take a look here, we'll see that in both cases we have our aromatic compound, which is going to be benzene. And then we have our substance here, bromine or chlorine, to react with it. Now the big thing to note is, is that the benzene, being an aromatic compound, is particularly stable, so it's not very readily reacted with. So these here are not actually strong enough electrophiles to get this reaction rolling. So you'll notice that above the arrow, in both cases, we're going to see a catalyst. In the case of the bromination, we're going to use iron 3 bromide, and in the case of the chlorination, we're going to use iron 3 chloride. There's going to be a reaction that occurs between these two components and these two components that generates the actual electrophile that we're going to use to get this reaction going. When the reaction does happen after the generation of that electrophile, you'll see that in the case of the bromination, we've substituted out a hydrogen for a bromine, and in the case of the chlorination, we've substituted a hydrogen for a chlorine. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this mechanism looks like. Okay, so now what we're going to do to help understand how this reaction happens is to take a look at the bromination mechanism. So now the bromination and the chlorination mechanisms are really similar, and I'll point out areas where you would see a difference. So now in both cases, the first thing you have to do is generate your electrophile. Because remember, Br2 in this case, or Cl2 as well, isn't a strong enough electrophile to get the reaction going. So what we're going to see is that here the bromine is going to react with our iron 3 bromide, where iron 3 bromide is a Lewis acid, which remember means it can accept electrons. So this bromine here is going to come and attack the iron, and we're going to create this compound here. And it's that compound with the weakened bond that's actually going to be used as the electrophile in the next step, which is the EAS step. Now, as far as chlorination goes, this is pretty much the same. The difference is this would be chlorine, and then instead of FeBr3, we would be using FeCl3. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty much identical. Okay, so now we're ready for the second step, the electrophilic aromatic substitution part of this mechanism. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our aromatic compound, in this case benzene, and we're going to react it with the electrophile that we just made. So what we're going to see is that that benzene is going to come and attack the bromine, kicking off the rest of the group because of that weakened bond. So now this is going to be an equilibrium because benzene is losing aromaticity in this step. It's not particularly favorable, but because we've made such a good electrophile, it is possible. So what we're going to have then is some kind of base in the solution, there are a few things that could do this, is going to come and deprotonate this compound. When this base comes and removes that H, we're going to see that the electrons that were part of that bond will come and collapse back down, re-establishing our aromaticity. And this is going to be a one-way arrow because this is so favorable. Now in the case of the chlorination, it's pretty much the same, just substitute the BRs for a Cl and you'll see what happens in that mechanism. And that's pretty much what you need to know.